from Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, Bond says NBC broke its own rule as condemnation continues to trail sanctions against Trust TV and others. Military authorities probe soldier police clash in Lagos. APC moves to reconcile aggrieved members in the Northwest ahead of 2023 elections. And on the foreign scene, English Premier League resumes Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Lockons in London. Good evening. Welcome to Trust TV News. I am Deron Ifade. The Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria says that the National Broadcasting Commission has violated its own laid down procedures when it sanctioned Trust TV and other paid TV platforms. In a letter to NBC and signed by Bonn Executive Secretary Dr. Yemi Bangbose, the organization says the NBC was required to wait for a response from the affected stations before slamming them with 5 million naira fines for transmitting TV documentaries that were considered offensive to government. Bond pointed out that in the case of Trust TV that aired the documentary on March 5th, its executives were summoned to the NBC's headquarters on August 3 and handed a letter of fine contrary to the 14-day time frame provided for in section 14.2 of the code. Bourne is therefore asking the regulator to withdraw the fines imposed and adopt a two-layer disciplinary procedure on matters pertaining to the violation of the code. And some Nigerians have described the decision to fine Trust TV Network 5 million naira for a documentary it aired as authoritarian and undemocratic. They are also of the opinion that the action is an attempt not only to oppress the media, but to further heighten the insecurity bedeviling the country. Abla Yama samples the opinions of some Nigerians in Katsina and reports. These Nigerians are asking why the Nigerian government is wielding its sledgehammer on the media for raising issues that are real and already dwarfing Nigeria in the eyes of international community. People such as the fifth Wazir in Katsina, Professor Sani Luga, and Dr. Samaila Balarebi, head of mass communication department, Hassan Usman Katsina Polytechnic, disagree with the NBC sanction. First of all, particularly the media trust television broadcasts, to my mind, should have earned an A in research in a very, very senior university. It was an excellent research document, which I thought the government should use because it satisfied all the criteria for research. That documentary traced the genesis, the reasons behind banditry. It also discussed the effect of banditry and recommended measures that should be taken to curb banditry. To my mind, the government should have funded even more of such media documentaries. I would therefore advise the government to withdraw the sanction and uh, perhaps even commend Media Trust for that excellent work. They believe the National Broadcasting Commission wants the media to turn its face away from the reality of the situation and are asking questions. Will any Nigerian say all is well with the incessant terrorist attacks, killings, abductions for ransom, daylight robbery and rustling of animals? It is only when these questions are answered that the sanction on Trust TV can be justified. The, the Trust TV has every right in that respect uh, to produce the, that documentary uh, under the pretext of the public principle. 
you know, even in the defense for defamation in communication law. Uh, public principle is one of the defenses for defamation. Uh, public public principle is, is, is normally, you know, advanced. It is told more by the media actually produce something that may likely seem to go against the wish of the of the state but it capitalizes on the fact that it is doing it for the public interest with a view to promoting some public good in society they described the sanction as unwise in Kazan state it is even more puzzling in light of the fact that the state has in the last five years been under siege with about 10 to 12 local governments under the total control of terrorists Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. Meanwhile, some Abuja residents have urged the National Broadcasting Commission to rescind its recent decision to impose fines on Trust TV and other media outlets. The broadcast regulator had come under intense condemnation for penalizing the Trust TV for investigating and revealing the origins of banditry, its impact on its victims and the motives of the bandits themselves. Government had accused Trust TV and other media outlets caught up in the NBC fine of glorifying bandits and terrorists. The residents believe government's action through the NBC amounts to gagging the media. Um, I, I feel it's not really fair because actually you guys are doing your job. It's uh, called investigative journalism. So basically, you know, you have to at least it's done within the confines. It's not like any tips have been given to them. You're just trying to like give you know the government heads up that okay, this is what's going on, this is what's in, it's in their mind and everything. So I think it's not fair. My opinion, I don't think it's fair. I think they should look into that documentary and extract vital information from there. Because uh, to, to get documentary, that means that is like investigative uh, journalism. You have investigated and you discover something, you are documenting it. They should actually be encouraged, they should actually be applauded for doing such. It shouldn't, it shouldn't lead to giving them, penalizing them, you understand? This is what even I believe the government is supposed to do. Definitely speaking, I don't see anything being, being fair there. Because letting the citizens of this country to know what is happening about the banditry is something that everybody will embrace it. But for the government, for NCC to just uh, find a charge, NBC, to just bring a fine of uh, 5 million around on Trust TV, I think it's very wrong. It's not, it's not encouraging. Therefore, they want government to reverse the decision. I don't think it's fair because uh, uh, um, uh, journalists, they do a good job by going to you know, get information for us to know what is happening. I don't think it's fair. If they really sanction them, I, don't, I think it's not fair. Because by doing that, they are denying Daily Trust TV and Nigerians to express their fundamental human rights. There must be freedom of, of speech. The back and forth on the fine imposed by the NBC clearly shows that Nigerians believe that Trust TV was doing its job and providing them with useful insights. They therefore want government to be fair to the TV network and reverse the fine. Fatima Musa, Trust TV News, Abuja. Following the security challenges bedeviling the nation, the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Chemical Biological Radiological Nuclear Command Operatives of the Nigeria Police Force has trained 324 of its personnel on explosives technique to address explosives associated with terrorism across the nation. Addressing the 324 auxiliary personnel at the Police Mobile Force Training College, Nasarawa State, at the course 29A 2022 graduation ceremony, the Inspector General of Police, Al Kali Baba, charged the trainees to use the knowledge acquired to tackle the menace of insecurity in the country. IGP Baba, who was represented by the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Federal Operations Department, Force Headquarters, Balachiroma, said that the training was aimed at enhancing and reinvigorating EOD operations across the nation. 192 of them were recruited this year and trained this year. Today, we are celebrating the passing out of about 320 uh, EOD operatives that were recruited between 
2016. Soldiers attacked to the 81 Division have beaten a police officer to death in the Ojo area of Lagos State. The acting deputy director, 81 Division Public Relations, Major Olani Oshoba, confirmed the incident on Friday. According to him, the division has instituted a board of inquiry to probe the incident. The Lagos State Police Command spokesman, Benjamin Hundei, equally confirmed the incident, while details have not been released by either the police or the army authorities. Multiple reports claim that the soldiers were on their way from a program at the Ojo Military Cantonment on Wednesday when the incident happened. The soldiers who were on a bus reportedly got stuck in traffic around trade fair area of the Lagos Badagri Expressway when they realized that the traffic was caused by officers attempting to make a way for a truck driver to link the expressway. The soldiers came down from the bus and confronted the policemen. This resulted in a heated argument with the soldiers reportedly taking some of the police officers to the barracks where they beat and tortured one of them to death. Four persons, including a traditional ruler and high chief, Mikaela Bello, have been abducted by gunmen on Thursday evening while traveling back from Akure Ondo state capital to Ikare Akoko. The incident was said to have occurred while the victims were traveling along the Agokpano axis of Owo Ikare Road. It was gathered that the driver of the vehicle conveying the victims tried to maneuver his way out but was shot while trying to escape from the gunmen, while the four victims were abducted and taken to the forest. The driver of the vehicle, who was said to have been hit on the head by a bullet, is now receiving treatment at an undisclosed hospital in Owo. Confirming the incident, the State Police Public Relations Officer, Fumilayo Odulami, said detectives from the command have been combing the forest in the area to ensure the release of the victims alive. The Kaduna State Commissioner of Police, Yakini Adio Ayoku, has called for continued support for the police to enable the force deliver on its mandate. The commissioner, who was represented by ACP Brian Danladi of the Kafanchan Area Command, stated this at the graduation and passing out parade of the pioneer set of the students of Police Secondary School Tum Kaguro in Kaura local government area of Kaduna State. He called on the graduating students to use the training they received in the institution to better their lives and be good ambassadors of the police. In his remarks, the school commandant, Solomon Dantawaye Ambatu, commended the senator representing Kaduna South Senatorial District, Danjuma Tela La, for sponsoring the school project. Senator La said the police secondary school, Kagoro, is one of the best things that happened to the people of Southern Kaduna in terms of educational development. This school has one of the constituency projects for this senatorial district. I was very excited here in Kum Kagoro, Kora local government and they are following a keen competition, among others. Several interested senatorial zones at the end of the competition. Our senatorial district was selected by a dean of God's special favor. To him alone, be all the praise and honor. It was designed, designed to have a primary secondary school section right in the secondary school of Kopang and the main primary school at Kapa Chan. The primary school section in the secondary school Kopang 
is fully operational. Well work in the main campus at Kabachan is in progress. We hope, therefore, to establish this school, post secondary and primary school organization. Wherever we are, wherever we associate with, we associate in terms of discipline and dedication. One day we will meet some of you on the way and we say this is our student that we have trained. And these students are well trained and they are also incorporating the discipline of the Men of the Undo State Security Network Agency, the Amotekun Corps, have apprehended over 150 suspected invaders of northern extraction in Akure, the state capital. The persons were intercepted around 6.30 a.m. on Thursday along the akure Adoekiti Highway during a stop-and-search operation by the Corps. The drivers of the two trucks conveying the invaders claimed they are coming from Abuja, Kano, Katsina, and Jigawa states to Ondo state. While addressing newsmen in Akure about the incident, the commander of Amatekun in Ondo state, Adetunji Adeleye, disclosed that they hid under bags of rice and beans in the truck, noting that they could not tell their mission in the state. He added that some charms and photographs were found on them while the motorcycles in their possession did not have valid papers. Adile explained that the travelers will be interrogated and profiled before sending them back to their bases. Gunmen have kidnapped three underage children in Ajakuta local government area of Kogi State. They are demanding a ransom of 100 million naira. The police public relations officer of the Kogi State Command, William Aya, confirmed the abduction on Friday. In a statement, he said the commissioner of police in the state, Edward Ebuka, has deployed operatives of various police anti-kidnapping units in collaboration with vigilantes and hunters to trail the kidnappers in order to rescue the children and bring the perpetrators to book. The three children, whose ages range from three, five, and ten, were on Wednesday around eight o'clock in the evening kidnapped at their residence, Kaduna Estate, Ajokota Steel Township Complex, by yet to be identified gunmen. And eyewitnesses reports revealed that the kidnappers who were fully armed with guns, shot sporadically to scare residents away before they abducted the children. Four persons have been confirmed burnt beyond recognition in a road accident Friday on the Lagos Ibado Expressway, while 16 others sustained injuries. The accident, which was said to have been caused by overspeeding, resulted in loss of control while the bus rammed into the median strip and burst into flames. According to the public education officer of the Ogun State Sector of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Florence Okwe, the incident was a lone accident that involved a Mazda bus. The injured victims were said to have been taken to Victory Hospital Ogiri for medical attention. The sector commander of the FRSC Ogun State Ahmed Umar has, however, advised motorists to obey traffic rules and regulations. You're watching News Hour on Trust TV. Coming up after the break, young robotic engineer in the making. Stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. 
Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. If you're just joining us, this is News R on Trust TV, a recap of our top stories. Bond says NBC broke its own rules as condemnation continues to trace sanctions against Trust TV and others. And uh, military authorities probe soldier police clash in Lagos. Moving on to other news, President Muhammadu Buhari has approved 14 billion naira for the execution of a smart modular irrigation project. Executive Vice Chairman of the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Naseni Mohamed Sani Haruna, announced this on Friday after a meeting with President Buhari at the presidential villa Abuja Haruna who said he was at the villa to show the financial details of the agency's operation to the president, stated that the modular irrigation project, whose fund was approved last week, would enhance agricultural development in the country and enable farmers to produce crops three times around the year. He said the president, who is the executive chairman of the agency, needed to be updated on the way the place was being run. It was approved by Mr. President in 2021 that Naseni should be receiving 1% of the federation account, which is the statutory provision in the Establishment Act of Naseni. Now, Naseni has commenced receiving federal government component of the 1% of the Federation account. The budget of Naseni in 2022 is based on the estimated and expected 1% of federal government share of the federation account, which is 54 billion naira. This funding as space line charge is divided into 70.4% as capital, 11.22% as personnel, and 11.3% as overhead. That's the head of Naseni speaking at the villa. The Northwest Zonal Vice Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Sally Lukman, says the party is putting modalities in place to reconcile its aggrieved members in the zone before the commencement of the campaign this year. 
speaking after a meeting with APC State Chairman in the Northwest in Kaduna, Lukman said although the reconciliatory drive is recording positive results, the party needs to push harder to achieve more. The report. According to Lukman, each of the state within the zone set up a reconciliation committee, adding that as leaders in the zone, they have visited all the states and will return to push to ensure that all our group members are reconciled. So we are, we are pleased to note that progress are being made in each of our states. You know, in each of our states there are those reconciliation committees, you know. Um, and one of the decisions we took here is to try and go back and push the work of the reconciliation to conclude before the commencement of campaign on 28th September 2022. He explained that the party agreed for the committees to equally mobilize people who have registered to pick up their permanent voters cards. While noting that uh, the period the INEC earmark for it has closed, we have also taken note of the fact that there are still many people who have registered and their voters card are ready with INEC yet to be collected. And uh, we have agreed to uh, get the chairman to go back and mobilize citizens in our states to ensure that those who have registered and their voters card are ready, ensure that they collect it. Lukman Foda mentioned that the zone recorded an impressive percentage of the campaigns from other parties back to the APC. Ben Le Musa, Trust TV News, Kaduna. There have been calls to scrap the compulsory one-year youth service due to hazards posed by insecurity to members of the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC. But stakeholders are insisting that this scheme is very crucial in promoting unity and patriotism in line with upholding decorum in national discourse. Stakeholders rather, than, rather want the scheme to be totally overhauled. We are aware that the management of the NYSC has done tremendously well in securing of core members during their service year. We must also admit that various security measures introduced over the years by the NYSC management have been noteworthy in the sense that incidences of threat to lives of core members have reduced drastically compared to what was the case in the past years. Therefore, it remains an illusion on the part of the advocates for the scrapping of the NYSC, which in our opinion was brought about by pecuniary gains rather than the relevance of the issue at hand. Our support for the operation and reforms in the NYSC remains unflinching as worthy partners in progress. We believe that with the right incentives, the NYSC will remain that critical agency that will address the challenges experienced by youths in the country to transform their hopes and aspirations into tangible realities. More on the youth. A 17-year-old secondary school graduate in Kano, Isa Barde, is building a robot as he prepares for secondary education where he intends to widen his horizon in the field. Isa Barde says he plans to study robotics to become an expert in artificial intelligence. Trust TV correspondent Idris Jibrin met Isa and sent in this report. It's been three years since Isa Barde started inventing this robot. He says it's part of his life aspiration, even though there is little or no outside support. With a little help from his brother, Isa can now move this robot using his hands. This robot is made of uh, motors, DC motors, cardboards, and uh, some of LEDs, wires, copper wires, and aluminum. There are hidden pipes inside. 
and uh, the tires and even wood. So it makes up it not there are there are local things that I get from people and there are one market called Jakara, that area is there, they are destroying things so you can go and buy things that you need inside uh, something like their hair dryer, their motors inside, you can go and get that motors from them. Isa has just completed his education and now wished to study robotics in a foreign university. Unfortunately, his parents may not be able to sponsor him. I don't have the means to support him, but I will be happy if he has the support elsewhere, neither the government or individuals. I'm a poultry farmer at the other side. So by name, by, by the name, my father is a pioneer, a pioneer poultry farmer about Gwabarje, who has anxiety chicks. Even him, he cannot, he support the way his grandchild are moving, and he don't have the means to support them. According to his father, Isa started showing interest in engineering at the age of eight, and that following a constant encouragement and support, he is gradually perfecting his dream. Okay, my interest in him, I want him to be uh, a someone uh, very creative uh, that will... Uh, I want him firstly to be someone that uh, will be uh, somewhere one day. So I always support him when he gets tired on his work or he's about to give up. Uh, to give up, I always support him so that he will be uh, so that he will do something one day. As you can see, he embedded this robot. So uh, in uh, in the future generation, we didn't know what he will uh, create that might uh, help uh, our country at large. Although Isa aspired to invent more of this. But the lack of support by government authorities and other philanthropists may likely threaten, if not kill, his entire dream. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. A robotic engineer in the making. Good luck. Good luck. And more on technology. Blacksmithing is one of the oldest occupations in Africa. It has for centuries provided humanity with skills to fabricate objects out of iron. However, the art of blacksmithing goes beyond hot and noisy environment. It is a source of livelihood for many, which is at the risk of facing extinction. In this report, Trust TV's Kabir Lawa, Kabir Lawa takes a look at how 60-year-old man struggles to keep up with the business as technology is overtaking the craft. The report. Blacksmithing in Nigeria is an old, long occupation. It is found across all tribes. It is mostly practiced by men and transferred from generation to generation. However, this is fast disappearing as many find it to be a cumbersome procedure that requires strength. Yakubu Ibrahim, a 60-year-old blacksmith in Abuja, said he has been into the blacksmith business since 1986, when he started in just Plateau State Capital. He said he cannot pass over the business to his children, as they are all in school, to secure a better future than his. Adding that although he has people working for him, it is difficult to keep up with the technology. No. That time that we didn't finish work, this one is just surplus for grass. We just go to the already and we pack it. Anywhere where we go, we just begin to buy. Later, we begin to buy it small, small. Mm -hmm. They are living on set. They don't even use 20 naira at that time. Mm -hmm. and we started to even do it. Like more, 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 I think for penny. The black meat further added that the prices of raw materials needed to produce objects have skyrocketed making the business to slow down. Like this one now, from other we have to do. But this one is the local one, you blow the fire and make it. We to say the engine there now, and the measurement there for grand is easy for us. You can produce like 200, 1,000 in this. Because when the engine is there, it's very easy to produce. If the government can help so that the engine can come out, and all that thing can come out, the mood come out, and the engine come out, or wherever you are, the engine did. We can possess the engine so that we can, the engine, we can make the work easy for us. Reports show that blacksmithing is an emerging viable career path in the developed countries 
capable of creating wealth and huge employment due to availability of raw materials and modernized tools. But in Nigeria, the story may be different as Yakubu is still using obsolete tools for production. Malam Yakubu Ibrahim therefore called on government to introduce policies that can assist in preserving the trade. In Abuja, Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News. Uh, we move from handicraft to no craft at all. Street begging and hogging, hawking have been identified as some of the major causes of immorality amongst underage children as it exposes them to antisocial behaviors at an early age. An Islamic cleric and lecturer at the Waziri Umaru Federal Polytechnic, Brinin Kebi, Mohammed Mujitaba, stated this in an interview with Trust TV. Hamza Galadima sent in this report from Brinin Kebi. It is now 20 minutes after 10 in the morning in Brinin Kebi. But if you look behind me, these are some of the young girls that are roaming the streets of Brinin Kebi who are, instead of being in school, are on the street hawking. Street begging and hawking, especially by small children or underage children, has been a pain in the neck for most communities in Nigeria, particularly in the northern parts of the country. This is a situation when you see school-aged children hawking wares on the streets or marketplaces or being used to lead blind people to beg for arms on the streets. To most people, the major reason underage children are sent onto the street to either beg or hawk wares is poverty. We are here. We are here trading together with both young or white girls and sisters. It has become necessary because they have no option through which to feed. But Malam Mujitapa, an Islamic cleric and a lecturer at the Waziri Umaru Federal Polytechnic, Bidenkevi, said Islam frowns at parents sending their children to either beg or hawk on the streets. Because of the dangers attached to such behaviors, he added that it is the responsibility of all parents to educate as well as provide for their families and to also protect the children from immoral influence. Uh, you see, we, we need to have a proper understanding of uh, Islam as a religion and as a way of life. I think the, the whole problem of advantages or disadvantages, like you said, of street, street hawking, you know, borders on our understanding of the religion. Uh, Islam is a religion of principles and guidelines. So whatever harms the human being, whether physically, psychologically, intellectually, economically, is anti-Islam. So Islam has a comprehensive approach to life. We understand that street hawking is injurious, especially to the young girls, boys and girls. And to that extent, it is an, against Islam. Dr. Mustafa Fada said, Although Islam allows for trading and economic activities, street hawking by underage children is one of the ways through which children are introduced to vices and unhealthy behaviors. President Muhammadu Buhari said former Inspector General of Police, IGP, Mustafa Balogun, popularly known as Tafa, who died yesterday, did his utmost to ensure that the police performed its statutory responsibilities under a democratic dispensation. A statement issued on Friday by Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, said the Tafa Balogun has pension for boosting the morale of officers and men in the force during his tenure as IGP. It has been acknowledged by those who served under him. The president, therefore, commiserated with the family, friends, and associates of the former inspector general and the Nigeria police force. He prayed for the peaceful repose of the soul of the deceased. We'll be back shortly.
TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Every patriotic Nigerian should hear this. Any politician who means well for the people will never allow themselves or their supporters to engage in any vile and destructive activities. No politician who truly wants to serve the people and develop the nation will encourage his followers to destroy properties or take human lives before, during or after the elections. The Nigerian public must watch out for these traits and isolate any politician who encourages supporters to engage in violence. No genuine politician or patriot will cause trouble and seek to destroy the very society which they aspire to lead or develop. Politicians who have the good of the people at heart will not allow themselves or their followers to engage in violence, destruction of properties and then taking of lives. Be vigilant. By the words you shall know them. Shun violence. Stay away from politicians who want you to do so. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. You're back on Newsar. On Wednesday, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries increased Nigeria's September quota by 100,000 barrels per day, bringing it to 1.83 million barrels per day. Chamunda Beng, in this report, asked the question, can Nigeria meet up? In times, Africa's largest oil producer has not done so well in meeting up with its numbers. So how will the nation meet up with this increase? Energy crude oil expert Yabagi Sani gives his insights. The increase by OPEC is supposed to be a cheering news, you know, for a country that is managing its resources well, but that cannot be said about Nigeria. The official information from government is that we are losing about five point something billion dollars every year. That is the official figure for Naiti, about four point something Naiti says. Every year we are reporting this. And very recently, uh, information I think from uh, official quotas also, says that we lost 80% of our revenue to oil, to, to, to crude oil theft. The country has been patiently waiting for the completion of the Dangote refinery, which is said to possess the capacity to process about 650,000 barrels of crude oil per day. But there are fears that the new refinery will fall prey to oil theft, vandalism, insecurity and policies that have hindered existing refineries from reaching their full potentials. If you remove those clauses, those constitutional provisions that are fueling corruption, 
you know, then it will work. Because if you deregulate the sector, where then Mr. Don, Mr. Dongotina will come and then, of course, buy his crude oil, market price, sell his petroleum products, you know, market price, you know, and your, name, your money will not be taken to pay Mr. Dongote. Care is not taken, they will even do more damage to you. They will steal more, you know, because these are Nigerians like yourselves, and they, they will feel comfortable talking to each other. You don't know what they are doing because they, they, the company is there for profit making, isn't it? Unfortunately, this is a company that is also a Nigerian company, and we know what happens in Nigeria. They can tell you they are operating international practice, best practice, yes, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, uh, it's okay, it's a good move, more people will be employed, that's for, that's for sure, because it's institutionalized in your constitution. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. And on the foreign scene, U.S. President Joe Biden's government on Thursday declared monkeypox a public health emergency, a move that should free up new funds, assist in data gathering, and allow the deployment of additional personnel in the fight against the disease. The move came as a nationwide cases topped 6,000, around a quarter of them from New York State. And experts warned that swift action was needed if the outbreak is to be contained in its early stages. Observers believe the real number of cases could be much higher than official figures suggest, since symptoms in the current global outbreak, which began in May, have included subtle signs such as singulations in addition to the more familiar widespread flashes. This can lead to cases being missed or misdiagnosed, misdiagnosed as the presentation is similar to common sexually transmitted infections. The U.S. has so far delivered some 600,000 vaccines originally developed against monkeypox's related virus, smallpox, but this number is still far short of approximately 1.6 million people considered at high risk and who need the vaccine the most. Still in the U.S., a small town in the state of Washington was evacuated due to a fast-moving fire that burned a half dozen homes as crews in California made progress against the state's deadliest and largest wildfire of the year. In Washington, the Adams County Sheriff's Office said on Facebook early on Thursday afternoon that residents of Lind needed to flee due to the encroaching flames. Later on Thursday, Sheriff Dale Wagner said six homes had burned, as well as eight other structures. With the help of state and local resources, Wagner said the fire was starting to calm down and by evening, all evacuation orders had been lifted. He said one firefighter suffered smoke inhalation and was flown to Spokane for treatment. We'll take a break now and we'll be back with sports.
Welcome back, and we move on to sport. Chelsea have signed Spanish defender Marcos Cucurella from uh, Premier League rivals Brighton on a six-year contract. The London club announced Friday no fee was disclosed, but British media reports have uh, valued the deal at £60 million. Pounds. The 24-year-old should now be available for Chelsea's Premier League opener away to Everton on Saturday. The Spain wing-back has now become Chelsea's latest pre-season signing with uh, Kalu Koulibaly, Raheem Sterling and uh, Kani Chukwemeka all having arrived at Stamford Bridge. Newcastle United manager Eddie Howe has uh, signed a new long-term contract just nine months after being appointed. Howe joined the Magpies on a deal which ran until the summer of 2024 when he took over to take over from Steve Bruce in uh, November 2021. Newcastle were 19th in the Premier League at the time, five points from safety after 11 games, and they guided them to an 11th place finish. Now, Crystal Palace manager Patrick Vieira relieves Arsenal possess the squad to challenge for the Premier League title this season. Arsenal and Vieira's Crystal Palace have opened the new English top flight campaign at Sellers Park with Arsenal victorious over Crystal Palace with a 2 0 win. The Gunners are boosted going into the new campaign following the signing of Gabriel Jesus, Fabio Vieira, Alexander Zinchenko, Marquiso, and uh, Matt Turner. And the former Arsenal skipper Vieira has backed Mikel Ateta's side to be a side to reckon with this term. Now, let's join Adeni Ajishafe for more sports news. World and Olympic champion Daniel Igali has been re-elected as the vice president of the Commonwealth Wrestling Board. Nigerian Wrestling Federation president Igali polled 17 votes to beat his closest rival from Canada, who scored 15 votes at a meeting of the General Assembly of the Commonwealth Wrestling Committee at the ongoing 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. The three vice presidents of the board from 2022 to 2026 will see the board improve on the development of wrestling within the Commonwealth. 13th edition of All African Games will hold from 4th to 19th August 2023 with Accra, Ghana as the host city. The West African nation is hosting the Quadrennial Continental Sporting Event for the first time in history. Organizers had already approved a 23 sport program for the African Games next year. We take ball, the sole demonstration of sport, arm wrestling, rugby, and cricket are due to make African Games debut at Accra 2023 All African Games. And in Commonwealth Games, world record holder Toby Loba Amushon has qualified for the final of women's 100 meter hurdles at the ongoing 2022 Commonwealth Games with an easy win clocking 12.40 seconds in his three hurdle race. Meanwhile, Nigeria SA Brume also hit the automatic qualification mark, leaping a distance of 6.5. 81 meters on a second attempt to make the women's long jump final. Toby Amunson, S.A. Brumel, will return on Sunday in the 100 meter women hurdles and long jump at the Alexander Arena in Birmingham City, England. Amunson holds world record 12.12 seconds in 100 meter women hurdles. And still in Commonwealth Games, Nigerian wrestler Odwan Yoadekure has claimed gold in the women's 57 kilogram category freestyle wrestling after beating Anshu Malik of India. The 2018 Commonwealth Games champion defeated her opponents 6 4 in the final to successfully defend her title. She won gold in Gold Coast in 2018 and ruled the final. The reigning African champion defeated Canada's Hannah Taylor in the semis in the swashbuckling 10 0 victory. The gold increased Team Nigeria's gold medals to six gold in all. 
that sport news i am adeni aji shafe and with that we've come to the end of news r on trust tv for more news connect with us across all our social media platforms i am diron onifade have a nice weekend <laughs>